YouTube. This is Jonathan Sessmeyer working on uh, Bodacious Creed, my master's thesis for Academy of Art University, where I'm a 3D modeling uh, major, or candidate now, actually, um, a master's candidate. So, what I wanted to show today, this is actually going to be a tutorial on how to do uh, UV maps using Maya and ZBrush. Um, the process is pretty straightforward, but I ran into a few problems on how the head was looking initially when I did the UV maps for, for Bodacious Creed, and I figured out a quick method for getting everything laid out uh, very nicely. And uh, I did that on Creed. I'm going to show this on Anna Lynn. So I hope this helps uh, other modelers and just anybody curious about how how we do this um, could be fun for you too. So. I'm going to try to fit this into a 15 minute video as well. <laughs> if I can't, I'll, I'll uh, upload it as two videos. So I'm going to delete half of Anna's body to start with. I can always duplicate it back over. It is uh, completely symmetrical at the moment. Now what I want to do is I want when the, the UV map is laid out, and again a UV map is a um, Okay, good. A UV map is simply the model, essentially it's the model flattened out. And uh, you can use that flattened out image to uh, apply texture maps and create texture maps for the character. Um, so what I'm going to do here is I selected that loop. I'm going to separate out some parts here. Basically this is going to tell um, ZBrush when I go into the UV mapping portion of it it's going to tell ZBrush where to, what what um, I want to be separate parts. Oops. One of the problems with the head is, uh, I found uh, Bodacious Creed's head looking just all wrong because um, of the interior portions of the head. It was. Uh, it was creating those attached to the rest of the geometry and it didn't really look like a head anymore even though ZBrush does a fantastic job of keeping all of the parts uh, even in, in such a way that when you do put texture on it it doesn't get stretched out or uh, have other problems um, and that stretching is, is a big problem with creating uh, UV maps um, it's still nice to be able to look at the UV map and see, okay, that's that's recognizable as, you know, a head or a part of a head. Okay, so I've selected these edge loops. I've selected, um, and basically I'm going to split off the mesh in several places. Nostril here, uh, interior of the mouth, and the uh, ear canal to start, and the, and the head from the body. So I go up to Edit Mesh, Detach Component. I'm also going to detach this part here. One of the problems I ran into on Creed yesterday when detaching the ear is I detached it a little bit uh, too much and I actually I really wanted to have it to where the seam was more like along here. But the way the ear is, these ears are constructed uh, for the most part, you want to have uh, what we call all quad topology, so all quadrilateral uh, polygons, all four-sided. Um, occasionally, uh, it, you can't really help but have a three-sided here and there. Right here, for example, here's a triangle. Uh, and because of the how complicated the ear is, it's, it's hard not to do that. But the ear doesn't move much, so um, it should look you know, much uh, if at all. So the ear, sh it should be just fine on the ear, but not on the rest of the model. But the problem I ran into was I must have cut an edge where a triangle is, and on one of the sides it created a, a five-sided polygon, and it looked uh, just wrong. Um, well, it, and it wouldn't even, uh, it wouldn't <laughs> actually bring it into ZBrush at all. So I'm, I'm making sure that I have quads on each side, on each of the edges, so that everything will go nicely into ZBrush. So now I'm going to detach the ear. 
Okay, now that that part is done, I select it. It's one object. Still, and that's fine. That's what it should be. And I'm going, but I'm going to go here and say, mesh, separate, and that detaches all the parts. Make sure they're they're different meshes. I do I duplicate it over to the other side. Okay, um, and I want to merge some of these together and not other parts. I, for instance, I don't want to seam uh, on the UV mesh on the UV map going through the middle of the front of the body. So what I do is I'll select the body, uh, mesh, combine, edit mesh, merge. So I merge those sides, and I merge the sides of the head. And then I go into the head, fun, fun, fun. There's other ways to do this, but I'm just going to do it this way. There's one side of the mouth, and there's the other side of the mouth. Okay, I'm going to go mesh, combine, merge on that. So now I have this piece, this piece, the interior of the mouth, uh, each ear is a piece, um, inside of the mouth is a piece, nostrils are a piece. And I'm going to hide the eyeball completely, because I'm not. that's not part of this mesh. That will be a separate thing. thing. I'm going to select all of this and say mesh combine. And that just basically makes it into one object, but these uh, the parts that I split apart are still separated. They're not basically welded together. It would be as if you, you know, put um, I don't know, just <laughs> anything. Two two pieces of something that fit together and just didn't lock it or, or whatever. So there, or didn't didn't glue two things together. You know, when you're putting together a table, maybe you have to put the leg in and then you have to put some glue in or something. So then I can go into this and use this nifty function called Go Z, which is new in ZBrush 4.0 and allows me to pop the model over to ZBrush, which will open right now. There it is and I drag the model onto the canvas and hide this shelf, I don't need that and so there's the model and then in order to create the UV map I go into Z plugin open that menu up and I go into UV master um, there are a lot of tools for creating UV maps this one is fantastic. It does a just amazing job. But I wanted to prepare the model a little bit for it to make it do an even better job. So that's what I was doing in Maya. I choose Enable Control Painting right here. And I like to say Attract from Ambient Occlusion. Actually what I want to do first is say work on clone. That's usually a good idea. Okay, so now I'm not working on the actual model, but on a copy of it, but I will put the UVs on the actual model. So this is if there are any problems, I'm a little bit more uh, covered, I guess you could say. So again, enable control painting, attract from ambient occlusion. Um, I want to make sure that it goes down, the, that the uh, seam goes down the back of her body and not the front. So I am painting, and I'm doing it uh, with X symmetry on. I'm painting down her body here. I'm going to go ahead and paint on the front of her face too, just to at least make an attempt to protect that. It's, it, it had some problems on the Bodacious Creed model, but still came out looking good. So, and then I'm going to click on Attract, and I'm going to basically that tells it uh, this th this is a good place to put the seams. So a good seam down the back through the buttocks and like that. That's all that ZBrush needs. And then I click on Unwrap. And there it just created a UV map. Let's see how it looks by clicking Flatten. Uh, there it is. I actually looks like I may have to do a little bit more to get it right because as you can see the face here uh, it's not going in. There we go. The face here Something happened. It it didn't it didn't do what I wanted it to do, but other things worked very well. And the body, as you can see, 
as you can see there, the breasts in the front, so it did the front. Splits up the fingers very nicely, so they'll wrap around the hand. Same with the toes. Um, these various parts are probably from the inner ear. Uh, here's one of the ears, here's another ear. So everything is split up very well. There's, that's the interior of the mouth. Um, I, I'm going to play with this some more to get the head right. But that is the basic method. So yeah, off, off camera I'll go ahead and, and, uh, and do this as, as a separate thing. But, uh, and what I'll basically play around with is where the seams are and whatnot and see if I can get the head to not split you know, right at the forehead as it looks like it's doing. Otherwise, though, as you can see, this is a very easy method for doing it, and I did get some, some of the parts separated out very nicely. Then what I can do is, say, unflatten, copy UVs, select the model, paste UVs, hit Go Z again, and after a moment, it brings... I wanted to show that I did a little bit more tweaking with how I bring this into ZBrush and I fixed the um, the UV map. I I split, I did, did a detached component uh, with the back of the seam of the head down to the brow and all the way down the back of the body into the crotch area. And that helped the face looks better. They're still, the, the brow isn't connected. I wanted to have that connected. But, you know, what ZBrush is really trying to do is to keep stretching out of the equation as much as possible. So, the way I'm going to do the UV maps, uh, the seams shouldn't show. I don't, I, don't, I don't think they will when I'm done. Uh, I'm going to talk to my instructors and see what they have to say about that. But, my theory right now is, um, is basically stretching is a bigger problem than seams. So, um, so to prevent stretching, um, I'm, I'm allowing for some of those splits. So here is how the map looks. You can actually, you can, this is where it, I'm talking about it splits around the eyes. But otherwise, the face is all there very nicely. Um, I enlarged the head part. It was, uh, you know, smaller to fit with the body. But I enlarged that to give it more texture space because a lot of, you know, your focus on, on people is on their faces and they, they need extra detail. Uh, I also enlarged the ears because they're so much a part of the head. I thought they should be uh, enlarged uh, equivalently. So that's that's the map I turned out with. Looks better, and uh, that concludes my demonstration and tutorial.